The part in the simulated universe world tree is extremely strong, especially in difficulty 2, you can just follow up and eliminate almost any single DPS of your team, especially if it targets them. But not to worry, in this video I'll be showing you actually how I managed to win this battle with just two characters left as well in his final phase. If you're interested, do stick around to find out. Now the clip here is actually for difficulty 2, but any difficulty 1 player will also find this helpful because I made it a point to make sure that I use all my buffs that difficulty 1 players could find as well. And my path of choice is the path of destruction. Now destruction is a very tricky one to play, uh, but once you master it, you can actually clear a lot of levels are very under leveled as well. So what destruction generally focuses on is using the lost HP that your characters have and dealing it as like a burst damage as we can see over here. Now a lot of you might be wondering, why path of destruction? There are so many other paths to choose from. But basically, if you think about in terms of his overall dynamic and his kit, Gapa is actually pretty straightforward a boss. He has a huge amount of DPS check to get through his side monsters, as well as his huge thick shield that he summons from phase 2 onwards. Uh, and other than that, you also want a lot of defensive ability in order to shield up to prevent getting one-shotted by him or his side moving. But other than these two factors, in terms of like DPS check and sustain, he's actually pretty simple. He doesn't have any domination or any fancy mechanics that he uses as well. And Path of Destruction, out of all of the Paths of Resonance, is the most balanced by far. It offers you a good amount of offensive ability in terms of draining some HP, dealing damage based on lots of HP, plus his buffs along the way gives you benefits for being at slightly lower life as well. Combined together with a healer like Natasha, and even Path of Preservation in terms of picking up some buffs, for example if you have a little bit of shielding and a bit of defensive position, I find it really goes a long way. Once you get 6 Path of Destructions, you actually get the Resonance ability, which when you cast the spell, you actually set your life and turn that huge chunk of lost HP directly into a shield. Half of preservation stacks upon this by either allowing you to use like quick damage in terms of turning it into damage, or turning your shield to become more chunky where shields take uh, able to take more damage or shielded characters, for example, get damage reduction and stuff like that. So what are some of the blessings I'll be actually looking to pick up along the way? I think based on this logic, if you want to go for like a turtling spread and relying a lot of the past of Wrath Resonance, you want to go for stuff that like increase your max HP, increase your defense if you are a lower life, focus mainly on like destruction paths because we want to try to get up to 9 so that uh, you can get 2 of the resonant buffs for destruction later on as well. Any other buffs should be generally centered around more defensive traits in terms of either reducing damage or playing around the use of shield that we have because Fire MC in this team does generate quite a lot of shielding and if we like have buffs for example like when your character is uh, up with a shield you have less damage taken and stuff like that I think it's really really solid as well. And for those of you who want a bit more consistency in your runs, you've been getting like bad luck in terms of your blessings, I think this one is very important to unlock, especially in the ability tree. So make sure you have this unlocked as you allows you to, for example, like reset your blessings every now and then to search for new ones, especially when you're like trying to reroll to get a very nice set of items. You don't have to have everything enhanced later on, so this uh, deduction in terms of the currency isn't super major as well, and it's a huge kit to make your runs just a bit more consistent and you don't feel like strangling every run. Now that we have the big picture out of the way, let's get in terms of the different phases and stuff that I want you to take note of. So the first phase is going to be the easiest out of all three phases and you just want to first by taking out the two side mobs away because they do add a little bit of DPS on the field as well. And after you take those two side mobs down, you can go ahead and either break if you want to or you can just like DPS down uh, the part, the part as well. More than phase 2. Okay, so phase 2 here introduces a new mechanic. He summons a little stronger monsters as well. But the main mechanic that he has here is he actually gets this huge shield. And you seem to be like doing no damage. But uh, if you look on top of his head, actually, there is like a shield counter. And each time you dish out damage, that shield is actually uh, going down. So it's not like infinite and you can't DPS it down. You can, it just takes a little bit of time. But once you bring that shield down, it's more or less the same as uh, the other uh, phases that you will notice as well. So as you can see, like you don't really need in terms of a weakness breaker in the second or third phase. It's nice to have, but a lot of it comes down with like just sustaining in terms of DPS potential. So don't worry if like you don't have Serval or you don't have Susang build as well. It's not super super vital for this fight. Okay, phase 3. This is the hardest of all three phases by far. He summons much stronger monsters and he also has like this double attack that he can do which really like wiped out both of my DPSs as well. But if you saw from the opening clip already, we don't really need to rely a lot on that. Other than uh, just these mechanics, it's more or less the same as phase 2 so it's pretty straightforward to do if you follow the tips I have so far. 
And I won't waste the time uh, running through this, we already seen quite a bit of it already. Let's go ahead and jump into my character builds I used for this match. Okay, in terms of like blessings that I took, these are the exact blessings I had when I was running this team. I'm uh, just basically looking for destruction buffs as well as preservation, anything that gives me a bit more defensiveness, sustain or playing around the fact of lower life or shielding as well. So I have 17 destruction bars in total uh, and 5 preservation. As mentioned, I do reset them quite often just to find the right ones. And these are my resonance that I took. This one is the one procs twice, helps me clear faster. This one saps HP to dish out damage and creates a shield. And this is just like the pure base one as well. These are my curios I took. I didn't get lucky with the lotto unfortunately. But now let's head into character builds. Okay, and now in terms of the four characters that I use for this match, mainly is really Fire MC as well as Natasha, the most like MVPs. The other two are quite okay, they got me to the end, but they didn't really finish off the match because the uh, DPSs are generally a little bit squishier. So in terms of Fire MC, her main role is a tank drawing aggro away from the rest of the teammates, as well as providing a shield every now and then uh, for the rest of the team as well. For those of you who don't want to use a Fire MC, you could of course use a character like Gepard, who gives a lot of shielding as well to the rest of the team. Uh, March 7 I don't think is as strong but if you really wanted to you could use her I do like Fire MC because she provides like, team wipe in terms of shielding and it gives you that uh, additional stat for example when you merge together with like, preservation buffs when your teammates have a shield they get taking less reduced damage it all compounds up and I think Fire MC is a pretty pretty free to play good option as well in terms of light cones I'm using uh, day 1 of my new life you don't really need to have this one but I'm using it because it gives like team wide damage reduction just to compound on whatever preservation buffs we have as well as a four star stats because four star light cones generally scale better together with a bit of increased defense for her as well and in terms of like relics that i'm running i am running a four piece wuthering snow mainly because i want the additional damage reduction which compounds uh, across like everything we talked about as well uh, this effect four piece one is pretty nice to have a little bit of hp restoration as well as uh, some energy restoration as well it was really mainly here as you can see i built her mainly for a break effect over here and uh, anything else that I have is just uh, scaling up in terms of that break effect. If I go into the stats here, you can see the break effect is like 73.7%. Was it useful? I think it was when in terms of like phase one, but once I hit phase two and he started to have like the heal immunity shield up and like preventing him to even get weakness breaks unless his shield is down, uh, weakness breaking is not very, very effective, which is why I like, didn't talk much about that in the strategy. I don't think it's super important, but in terms of what uh, she is built with, I would say is I'm using the free light cone the five star light cone that you can get from the herta shop uh, and this is called the cruising in the stellar sea and uh, that is my susang build so is similar she is also she was decently important uh, in the first phase but then again uh, second phase onwards is just additional attrition damage because most of the weakness breaking happens when you break his shield in terms of doing enough dps so i would say this is one of the rare matches that you don't really need perfect typing going into the boss fight I'm using uh, Seriousness of Breakfast for her. You can get this from the Forgotten Halls shop, the Memory of Chaos and stuff like that, that shop. You can get it there. It's all the way on the right. And in terms of relics, I'm running on her a Guard of Wuthering Snow. Again, some damage reduction. Wasn't enough as you guys saw, not enough to survive, but it, it is what it is as well. Okay. And the most clutch one, I think my MVP of my entire team will have to be Natasha. Uh, without her sustain going on and without her additional like uh, ability to, to emergency heal, like emergency panic button, I definitely wouldn't have cleared that. It, it bought me enough time to allow like, the Path of Resonance to do its work. So fantastic. I think it's definitely the MVP of the match as well. In terms of Light Cones, I'm running a post-op conversation on her. And in terms of Relics, I'm just using like literally the free uh, Passerby of Wandering Cloud and just some like space ceiling station that we got if you farm a little bit of the world three well world four as well okay and if you want to see like all my builds in full detail on these characters and other four star characters that i have built as well i will leave like the build guide links right here you can go ahead and check it out click around as you want very very in-depth as well and thank you so much for watching if you found it helpful do leave a like subscribe for more of such content as well thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video